Wednesday, July 25, 2018. 5.30 a.m., Chris called Kessinger and held a six-minute conversation. Straight after at 5.36 a.m., Chris made an unanswered call to Shanann, two minutes later she called him back and held a nearly 11-minute conversation. 6.09 a.m., Chris left for work. He arrived at the Bat Cave at 6.33 a.m. 8.34 a.m., Chris arrived in Fort Lupton. He was parked at the Grease Monkey, which is a local oil change and automotive repair place. He was still there three minutes later. Maybe his work truck is having something done to it. Between 8.41 a.m. and 12.07 p.m., Chris searched Google on the following topics, when to say I love you, when to say I love you for the first time in a new relationship, what do you feel when someone tells you they love you, how does it feel when someone says I love you? 9.30 a.m., Kessinger spent 45 minutes searching Google on topics like how to prepare for anal sex and the anal sex guide. This progressed to searches at Pornhub for interracial porn videos and threesomes with double penetration. This is when I believe Kessinger searched for this and not when said in the discovery. If you want me to explain why I came to this conclusion please say so, I will make another video explaining this once this series is over. 9.31 a.m., Chris is still in Fort Lupton at the Grease Monkey, also still there at 9.33 a.m. 9.46 a.m., Chris is now at Paragon X3012, in Fort Lupton. 10.16 a.m., Chris is now at the Safeway Garage in Fort Lupton. 3.20 p.m., Chris arrived home from work. 3.47 p.m., Kessinger received a call from Kaylee at Tasman Geosciences and held a 49-minute conversation. Her call showed she was in Fort Lupton. I wonder if she was there when Chris was. For 35 p.m., Shanann called Chris and held a 23-minute conversation. For 36 p.m., Kessinger called Watts and left a voicemail. Following an eerily disconcerting childlike giggle she told Watts, I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back, bye. Hi. <laughs> it's me. I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Bye. Chris was on the phone to Shanann when Kessinger left that message, immediately after ending his call with Shanann. Chris called Kessinger briefly. However I can find no proof he called her back, it's in discovery but not in Kessinger's phone records. 6.31pm, Chris searched Google for sand dunes weather. 6.58pm, Kessinger called Chris and held a 15-minute conversation. Straight after at 7.14pm, Kessinger called Jim and held a 19-minute conversation. Straight after calling Jim she called Chris again at 7.34pm and held a two-minute conversation. Three minutes after this call ended she called Jim again at 7.40pm and held a one-minute conversation. Thursday, July 26, 2018. 5.30am, Kessinger called Chris and held a four-minute conversation. Call registered in Thornton. 5.40am, Chris made an unanswered call to Shanann. She returned his call three minutes later and they held a five-minute conversation. 5.52 a.m., Chris left for work. 6.16 a.m., he arrived at the Anadarko office. Shanann has been quiet the last day, apart from an odd Thrive post. Today at 8.06 a.m., she posted a picture saying, every single time. 8.46 a.m., Kessinger called Brian at US Hydro and held a one-minute conversation. Call registered in Gilcrest, Colorado. Gilcrest is a part of the Greeley Metropolitan Statistical Area. 8.47 a.m., Kessinger again called Brian at US Hydro and held a two-minute conversation. Call still in Gilcrest. 8.49 a.m., Kessinger called Kaylee at Tasman Geosciences and held a two-minute conversation. Still in Gilcrest. 9.08 a.m., Kessinger called Jim and held a four-minute conversation. Call still in Gilcrest. 9.40 a.m., Kessinger called Robert Adsadi and held a 10-minute conversation. It's been said Robert is a member of OTO, Ordo Templi Orientis, 
also known as Thelma religion, it is a form of occult worship that focuses on sex magic among other things, and the main premise is following of the founder Alistair Crowley, do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. Her call registered in Johnstown, Colorado. Johnstown is a home rule municipality in Weld and Larimer counties. 10.22 a.m., Shannon posted saying, third pregnancy and I'm feeling really great. Not exhausted, not losing sleep, good mood, patience with two toddlers. I'm glad I'm thriving and so is everyone around me. If you're not thriving, you're missing out. 10.26 a.m., Chris text Kessinger saying, there it is. Yes, you deserve a pay increase for everything you're doing. Your plate is only getting fuller because people know what you can do. They need to compensate you now rather than later. 11.10 a.m., Robert Idsardi, OTO, called Kessinger and held a six-minute conversation. She is now in Platteville. 11.28 a.m., Shanann called Chris and held a six-minute conversation. 11.50 a.m., Chris searched Google for GIT. Not sure what this is. 12.17 p.m., Kaylee at Tasman Geosciences called Kessinger and held a two-minute conversation. Call still in Platteville. 3.55 p.m., Chris was outside 6201 Saratoga Trail, in his work truck, which is up the road, higher up than his house. 4.01 p.m., Chris called Chase Bank and held a four-minute conversation. 4.04 p.m., Kessinger left a voicemail for Brittany her friend. Call registered still in Platteville. For 28 p.m., Chris accessed MicroPaid Center. This website services universal prepaid visa cards. The site promotes a 5% cashback incentive when used at preferred merchants. For 40 p.m., Shanann called Chris and held an 18-minute conversation. Simultaneous to that call Chris transferred a nude selfie of Kessinger into his secret calculator application. 5.01 p.m., Chris called Vivint briefly. 5.03 p.m., Kessinger called Chris and held a six-minute conversation. This call registered in Thornton. 5.16 p.m., Chris called Vivint a second time and held a 25-minute conversation. 5.52 p.m., Chris was outside in his work truck at 2909 Saratoga Trail. 6.39 p.m., Chris called Shanann and held a nearly five-minute conversation. While on that call, at 6.40 p.m., Shanann posted saying, My dung do, is the best. Nine years of doing my nails, minus when I'm in Colorado. She's amazing. Plus the gel pedicure is the bomb. 7.13 p.m., Chris searched Google for Lazy Dog in Erie. Possibly looking for the menu. 8 p.m., Chris again visited MyPrepaidCenter.com. Possibly to see if he can afford to buy the food. Friday, July 27, 2018. Chris took the day off work. He probably spent the night on the 26th at Kessinger's as she did not contact him until that evening at 7.11 p.m. She called no one until she called Jim at 6.20 p.m. 10.07 a.m., Shanann posted a picture. 10.08 a.m., Shanann posted a quote from Kevin Spacey. To know what you want, to understand why you're doing it, to dedicate every breath in your body to achieve, if you feel you have something to give, if you feel that your particular talent is worth developing, is worth caring for, then there's nothing you can't achieve. For 44 p.m., Shanann called Chris on his work phone, and held an 11-minute conversation. 6.20 p.m., Kessinger called Jim and held a two-minute conversation. Call registered in Thornton. 7.11 p.m., Kessinger leaves Chris a voicemail. Call still registered in Thornton. 7.17 p.m., Chris called Kessinger back and held a two-minute conversation. Call still registered in Thornton. Two minutes later at 7.21 p.m., Kessinger called Jim and held a 15-minute conversation. Call registered in Thornton. Again calling Jim after Chris. At 7.46 p.m., Shanann called Chris and held a two-minute conversation, and again at 7.50 p.m., she called him for a further two minutes. 8.48 p.m., Chris searched Google for prices on wine bottle openers. 9.01 p.m., 
Chris called Kessinger and held a two-minute conversation. Saturday, July 28, 2018. Great Sand Dunes. 6.26am, Shannon posted a Thrive post. 6.26am, Kessinger called Jim and held a six-minute conversation. Call registered in Thornton. Six minutes later at 6.38am, Jim called Kessinger back and held a further eight-minute conversation. Kessinger's phone registered in Thornton. Chris at some point this morning went to Glacier Liquors in Erie and spent $47.83, I believe he then went to Target to purchase a wine bottle opener as he spent $13.01 one cent there. These posted on his statement on July 28. He was looking the past evening for wine bottle openers. Chris and Kessinger left for the Great Sand Dunes, this would be a nearly four-hour trip. On their way to the Sand Dunes they stopped at the Cheesecake Factory in Denver, Chris spent $26.35 on this day, this posted on July 29, he also spent $1 parking fee, at the Public Works Parking Meter Denver, this posted on July 28, which is around 11-minute walk to the Cheesecake Factory, they then carried on with their journey. On the way there Chris spent $22.63 at a 7-Eleven, in Monument. There were no calls to or from Shannon since yesterday. I imagine Chris would have been at Kessinger's place and they left from there. 10.58 a.m., Kessinger called OLT Orient Mine and held a two-minute conversation. Call registered in Fort Garland, near the Great Sand Dunes. Eleven AM, Chris called Valley View Hot Springs at the Orient Land Trust in the San Luis Valley. Their website boosts camping and lodging just north of the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Eleven thirty four PM, Chris searched the internet for Rio Grande National Forest, Zapota Falls Campground, located seven miles south of the Great Sand Dunes. He made a brief call to the campground moments later. Twelve fifty three PM, Chris took this photograph. Metadata confirms the image was taken at the Zapota Falls campground. In addition he shot a brief video of the same scene. The song playing in the background is Forever Girl by Jan Langston, Shazam, the lyrics tend toward a ballad. 1.44pm, Shannon made an unanswered call to Chris. He made two attempts to call her back roughly 10 minutes later. Discovery said, July 28 and July 29, 2018. Kessinger and Chris went to the Great Sand Dunes National Monument in Alamosa, Colorado. They drove to the location in Kessinger's Toyota for runner. They tent camped at Zapota Falls in an established campground on July 28, 2018. Kessinger said they stopped at a local gas station near the Great Sand Dunes National Park and purchased ice and firewood. She also said Chris paid for the items but she was uncertain if he used a gift card. Chris also rented sand boards for the Great Sand Dunes. The only gas station near the Great Sand Dunes is the Oasis, 5400 Colorado 150 Mosca, Colorado. Chris spent $20 at the Great Sand Dunes Mosca. Chris spent $37.11 at Kanoko Walsenberg. Both posted on his statement the next day July 29. Between 2.29 p.m. and 6.55 p.m., Chris took assorted photographs of the landscape at the Great Sand Dunes. Among these is a video of Kessinger speaking into the camera, thank you so much for coming out here with me Christopher, I am having a wonderful time. You mean a lot to me and I'm glad you're having a blast. Thank you so much for coming out here with me Christopher, I am having a wonderful time, you mean a lot to me, and I'm glad that you're having a blast. I am so out of breath. <laughs> 
The Kanoko Walsenberg Garage, Chris went to I believe on the way to the sand dunes, as they would pass that on their way. The message Kessinger left Chris shows she had access to Chris's phone, hence she left her message on there for him to find. Sunday, July 29, 2018 While Chris and Kessinger were out together, Shanann had been out busy working, at 12.46am, she posted saying, amazing local in York, South Carolina today. Great job to the amazing team here. Had so much fun and the girls even got a chance to shine, at Hickory Tavern, 2760 for Selenese Road, Rock Hill, South Carolina. 8.34am, Shanann posted saying, this summer I decided I wanted to spend six weeks with the family in North Carolina. Let the kids spend quality time with their family and the at same time help our team shine. It has been busy, crazy at times, stressful, and rewarding seeing my kids' faces. On top of that I saw our team shine. I didn't have to request time off, I didn't lose my job, I still am getting paid and growing. It's a huge blessing to work from anywhere I am and not have to answer to anyone. My kids can travel with me and go to events when I don't have anyone to watch them. They are my story, they are why I thrive. Hash no excuses, hash work from anywhere, hash blessings, hash my family, hash our team, hash one team one dream, hash an impregnant. These pictures of Chris and Kessinger I believe were taken at Zapotter Falls. This image I found of the large rocks shows the same as in the picture of Kessinger and Chris. They are wearing different clothes also, maybe these were taken on July 29, before they came home. Chris also spent $23.18 at Great Sand Dunes Oasis Mosca. Posted on his statement July 30, I believe his purchases here post a day later than when he purchased the items. We know he was not here on July 30 so got to be this day when he spent the money. Chris spent a further $10.10 at Great Sand Dunes Oasis Mosca. Again posted on his statement July 30. Total of $178.58 spent on this trip. Between 9.22am and 10.43am, Chris continued taking photographs of landscape near the Great Sand Dunes. 10.38am, Chris transferred images of Kessinger, to include a full nude selfie, to his secret calculator. 10.55 a.m., Chris texts Shanann saying, finish the hike. Packing up and heading home. Between 12.36 p.m. and 2.21 p.m., Shanann made four unanswered calls to Chris. 2.25 p.m., Chris called Shanann and held a brief two-minute conversation. 5.14 p.m., Troy McCoy text Chris asking, you are off tomorrow, right? When returning home from the Great Sand Dunes, Kessinger's friend Charlotte asked her to go to the Renaissance Festival. Kessinger made an excuse why she could not go, as she was with Chris and did not want Charlotte to know. Kessinger said she and Chris stopped in Colorado Springs at BJ's. They sat to the right of the doors and Chris paid for their meals with a gift card. BJ's restaurant is located at 5150 North Nevada Avenue, Colorado Springs. BJ's cost Chris $61.61, this posted on his account statement two days later on July 31st. Total spend now $240.19. 5.30 p.m., Shanann made two more unanswered calls to Chris. 5.49 p.m., having not heard from Chris, Shanann texted him and asked, I'm assuming you're safe considering it's been 3.5 hours. Chris replied, there was a car fire and the Renaissance Festival traffic in Colorado Springs. Just got our car. Headed home. He had obviously told Shanann he was going to the sand dunes and that he was traveling with someone else and left their car elsewhere. 5.53 p.m., Chris replied to Troy McCoy saying, I'm working tomorrow. 6.10 p.m., Troy replied, 10-4. p.m., throughout the day co-workers exchanged group text messages regarding scheduling for the following workday. 
Chris was uncharacteristically unresponsive. At 6.20 p.m., Chris finally replied, copy. Sorry, been out of the house all day. 7.24 p.m., Shanann called Chris and held a 14-minute conversation. 7.39 p.m., immediately afterwards Shanann told Chris, sorry you're so tired, but I haven't talked to you in 48 hours, and I had a hard weekend. Glad I have you to talk to. If you care. 7.39 p.m., Kessinger called Chris and held a four-minute conversation. While on the phone with Kessinger, Chris at 7.49 p.m., replied to Shanann saying, I'm sorry you had a hard weekend boo. I will make it up to you I promise. I'm sorry I'm out of it tonight. Shanann replied, it would have been nice for my husband to show interest in how the girls, and I are, and the baby. I'm done with begging for you to talk. See you Tuesday. She added, you're out of it from playing. 8.13 p.m., Kessinger again after speaking with Chris called Jim and held a 21-minute conversation. Straight after at 8.34 p.m., she called Chris back and held a two-minute conversation. 8.36 p.m., Chris visited MyPrepaidCenter.com. 8.38 p.m., Kessinger called Chris and held a one-minute conversation. 8.42 p.m., Kessinger called Longhorn Steakhouse and held a four-minute conversation. Is this why the quick calls between them, was Chris checking my prepaid center to see if he could afford the steakhouse food? He did purchase from here, I don't know the amount that was spent but Kessinger must have ordered it, as she is the one doing the call, so she also has access to his gift card. Monday, July 30, 2018. 5.30 a.m., Chris called Kessinger and held a three-minute conversation. A short while later at 5.39 a.m., Chris called Shanann and held a nearly six-minute conversation. 6.06 a.m., Chris left for work. 6.19 a.m., Kessinger called Irene, a family member, and held a 26-minute conversation. Call registered in Broomfield. 6.32 a.m., Chris arrived at the Anadarko office. 7.30 a.m., Shanann posted a picture. 8.11 a.m., Shanann sent Chris an insurance identification card, for their 2016 Lexus RX. The effective dates are August 15, 2018, through February 15, 2019. 9.18 a.m., Shanann sent Chris three images of swelling to the right ankle of one of their daughters, her face was not captured. Chris replied, it looks like her ankle is dislocated in that one picture. Shanann agreed and said, she may need special shoes. 12.30 p.m., Kessinger called Longmorn Toyota and held a four-minute conversation. Call registered in Platteville. She would have been at work. 1.32 p.m., Kaylee from Tasman Geosciences called Kessinger and held a two-minute conversation. Kessinger is still in Platteville. 2.49 p.m., Chris is in Fort Lupton working. He went to Safeway in Fort Lupton and spent $14.01. This posted July 31. 3.01 p.m., Chris arrived home. At 4.17 p.m., Shanann called Chris and held a 19-minute conversation. At 4.28 p.m., Kessinger called Kaylee from Tasman Geosciences and held a 15-minute conversation. Her call registered still in Platteville. Instantly after this call at 4.43 p.m., she called Chris and left a voicemail. Intermixed with her creepy giggles she asked what's to call her back. She must have been driving when she was on her call to Kaylee, because her call now registers in Fort Lupton. At 4.48pm, Chris called Kessinger back and held an eight-minute conversation. Her phone now registers in Brighton. At 4.59pm, Kessinger called Hazelbrook Sober Living and held a 22-minute conversation. Call registered in Thornton. Hazelbrook Sober Living is on a mission to fight addiction. Offering sober living homes for both men and women in the Denver Metro, Colorado Springs, and Pueblo areas. 5.14 p.m., Chris called Vivint and held a 10-minute conversation, while he is on this call, Kessinger at 5.22 p.m., leaves him a voicemail. As soon as Chris ended his call to Vivint at 5.24 p.m., he called Kessinger and held a 39-minute conversation. 
Between 5.39 p.m. and 5.49 p.m., Shannon texted Chris asking what they said. Although his call with Vivint ended nearly 30 minutes earlier, and he was now on the phone to Kessinger he responded he was still on the phone. Resetting settings and sensitivity, he said, should be good now, I will monitor it. 6.31 p.m., Chris searched Google for songs by a reggae band named Through the Roots. Watts then searched lyrics to their song, Down to Earth. Researching the song revealed lyrics that included, When I'm around you I can feel peace, if I'm ever cold I can count on you to heat me up with your presence, and at the lowest level you can make me feel like I'm sky high. Other lyrics are quoted by Chris in the card he wrote and gave to Kessinger on this date. 6.37 p.m. Chris searched Google for a country singer named Kanan Smith and his song, Love You Like That. Researching the song revealed lyrics like When I'm with you I can see down the road girl, not just the gravel one we're traveling on girl, and I'm betting that it's gonna be a wild ride, but I promise that I'm gonna be there by your side, I think we got another memory in the making. Chris gave Kessinger two cards on this day, one he made himself with a folded piece of paper and one he purchased. He wrote the song lyrics in both of them. 6.38 p.m., Chris searched Google for love letters. 7.49 p.m., Kessinger called Jim and held a four-minute conversation. Call registered in North Glen. She's at home. 7.54 p.m., again straight after calling Jim, Kessinger called Chris and held a one-minute conversation. Call still registered in North Glen. 7.56 p.m., Kessinger called her mom and held an eight-minute conversation. Still in North Glen. 7.57 p.m., Chris sent a message to Shanann, letting Dita out and going to bed boo, love you. Shanann called him minutes later and they spoke briefly. Around this date Shanann told Adi Maloney that her marriage was in trouble. Tuesday, July 31, 2018. Chris goes to North Carolina. Chris scheduled time off from work from July 31st through August 7th. In Chris's letters to Sherilyn Cadel he said, I left to go to North Carolina, Kessinger sent me a text saying, use this time to fix the issues with your wife and enjoy time with your family. 3.22am, Chris took a photograph of parking signs at Denver International Airport and sent messages, presumably to Shanann, at airport. Chris had started his trip to North Carolina. At 4.08 a.m., Chris began transferring a mass of assorted images of Kessinger and their trip to the Great Sand Dunes into his secret calculator application. They included these images. In addition, Chris transferred two videos from that trip into his secret calculator application. Both videos were shot by Chris as Kessinger surfed down a sand dune. Chris made comments like, so damn sexy. Carve it up. At 4.46 a.m., Chris texts Shanann saying, on the plane, love you boo. Shanann called him immediately and held a two-minute conversation. At 4.50 a.m., immediately afterwards Shanann told Watts, you never ever listen to me. She asked, how much a day? Chris sent her the photograph of the parking signs and advised, $16. Shanann asked which lot. Chris said the East Economy lot. Shanann replied, $130 we can't spend at the beach. She then asked Chris to text her when he lands in Atlanta. Chris agreed. At 4.52 a.m., Chris deleted Kessinger's APC Health Safety Environmental Contact from his phone. At 4.53 a.m., Shanann gave Chris instructions on how to schedule a ride from both Lyft and Uber. 
At 4.58 a.m., Chris called Kessinger and held a five-minute conversation. Her phone registered in Thornton. 5.05 a.m., Chris received a calendar alert, flight, WN656 from Denver to Atlanta. 7.57 a.m., Chris texts Shannon that he had landed in Atlanta. He advised his connecting flight departs at 10.45 a.m. 8.22 a.m., Kessinger called Jim and held a one-minute conversation. Call registered in Fort Lupton. Straight after at 8.22 a.m., Jim called Kessinger and held a 12-minute conversation. Still in Fort Lupton. 8.45 a.m., Chris received a calendar alert, flight to Raleigh, WN2141, and flight, WN2141 from Atlanta to Raleigh. 14 minutes after their last call ended Jim at 8.48 a.m., called Kessinger again. Her phone still registers in Fort Lupton, and four minutes after that call he calls her again at 8.53 a.m. and held another four-minute conversation. She is still in Fort Lupton. 8.57 a.m., Catherine, I believe she is connected to Anadarko, called Kessinger and held a one-minute conversation. Still in Fort Lupton. 9.02 a.m., Kessinger called Jim again and held an eight-minute conversation. Still in Fort Lupton. 9.20 a.m., Kessinger called Brittany, her friend, and held a one-minute conversation. Still in Fort Lupton. 10.18 a.m., Chris told Shannon that he just landed in Raleigh. Shannon asked him to let her know when you are coming down escalator so I can record girls, what's replied, okay boo. 12.44 p.m., Kessinger left a voicemail for Taylor, a friend. Her call is still registering in Fort Lupton. 1.19 p.m., Assyrian Protection Services called Kessinger and held a three-minute conversation. She is still in Fort Lupton. 1.22 p.m., Kessinger left a voicemail for, not sure who. Fort Lupton still. 3.49 p.m., Chris called Kessinger and held a four-minute conversation. This call has Kessinger in Platteville. Shannon posted a video of the girls and her meeting Chris in the airport. Did you notice how he looks at her tummy? At 4.40 p.m., Kessinger called Jim and held an eight-minute conversation. Call now registers in Brighton. This call ends, and again, at 4.48 p.m., Jim calls her straight back. And they held another 13-minute conversation. Call now registers in Henderson. I believe she is on her way home. 6 p.m., Sandra Gironda reserved a time for Shanann, Chris, and the girls at her family's restaurant. Their aperitifs were served by the time Sandra arrived at 6.30 p.m., Sandra said she was held up waiting to sign for a package so got to the restaurant late. She met Shanann, Chris, Bella, and Cece and had dinner, after dinner they went to the patio to visit for a little longer, because Sandra knew she would not be seeing them again for a while. 8.33pm, Kessinger called Jim and held a 22-minute conversation. Call registered in Thornton. 9pm, Sandra Gironda said farewells to the Watts family. Shanann snapped a picture of Sandra with the girls. Later that evening Shanann posted on Facebook that she felt ill, thought it felt like she was experiencing symptoms of food poisoning. She later texted Sandra and self-diagnosed dehydration. 9.49pm, Shanann texted and asked Chris, can you set an alarm for five and wake me please? Chris replied, yep I got it, love you. 
Shenan reciprocated. 10.19 p.m., Chris called Kessinger and held a 38-minute conversation. The night Chris arrived in North Carolina, Shenan noticed Chris was acting cold towards her. Chris did not sleep in the same bed with Shenan while they were there. He said he slept with the girls one night and slept on the couch. Every night he was in North Carolina, he said he and Shenan talked, but it was mostly through texts. Shenan's family was there and they really couldn't get their feelings across, except through texts. In his letters to Sherilyn Cadel he said, The first night I was there, the night I gave Shenan the Oxycontin. I texted Kessinger saying, I wouldn't be able to call, just text. She responded, why not? Are you with her? I thought she wanted me to spend time with my family, but obviously she wanted me to make time for her no matter what. The next eight days I ignored Shanann every night so I could disappear and talk to Kessinger for hours. Chris did phone her this night, they talked from 10.19pm for 38 minutes, did he call her because he felt he had no choice? Chris did do a search on Google for 80 mg of oxycodone will. It has not been possible for police to put a timeline on when he did this search but it did show on his phone. After a search myself I found this information. 80 mg of oxycodone can cause, feeling sick, nausea, or being sick, vomiting. Indigestion, tummy, abdominal pain, pain vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, dry mouth, weakness, lightheadedness, feeling dizzy, sleepy or drowsy, reduced appetite, feeling confused or disorientated, difficulty sleeping, headache, chills, itching, sweating, and rash. Some of these things Shanann said she was experiencing. It can also cause fatal respiratory depression. Oxycodone is known for quickly penetrating the blood-brain barrier and typically reaches peak intensity within one hour of dosage. Don't forget he was also searching for the CVS Pharmacy on June 20th as well, I am not saying these are connected but wanted to point this out. Frank Rusek said, The first night Chris was strange, he came out and lay on the floor in the living room where I was sleeping on the couch. I was watching TV and when I shut it off he sat up and I said what are you doing? He said he had a backache and it would help him, that was strange to me for him to lay on the floor. Wednesday, August 1, 2018. Shanann couldn't sleep due to feeling poorly. At 1.44 a.m., she posted saying, I'm so excited about August. Girls and I fly home August 7. I fly to Scottsdale August 10 to 12 for an amazing weekend with my Lavelle family. Gender reveal for baby what's number three. Our team is having lots of success, growth both personally and business, Several new friends starting their Thrive experience and lots of new promoters who decided to change their life. Lots of excitement, lots to be thankful for. You know what I love about waking up every day, it's a brand new day to have a fresh start, to be better than I was yesterday, to help someone feel better and happier, to make someone smile and laugh. I am just truly blessed and love waking up thankful and happy. If you are not happy it's up to you to change that. Everyone have an amazing day and absolutely fantastic month. A short while later at 2 a.m., Frankie Rusek, Shanann's brother, said he heard a noise about 2 in the morning on the night Chris arrived in North Carolina, and checked on it to find Shanann was sick. He said Chris never came to check on her or take care of her, he said Shanann was up all night. He also said Chris was acting standoffish, weird and distant, they thought he didn't feel good or he was tired from his flight so didn't think anything of it. He also said that Shanann only slept on the couch in North Carolina one night, and he believed it was the night Chris arrived. 3.45 a.m., Shanann posted regarding Thrive. Proving she was indeed still up. 6.26 a.m., Kessinger called her mom and held a three-minute conversation. Call registered in Thornton. This call finished at 6.29 a.m., but a couple of minutes later at 6.31 a.m., Kessinger's mom called her back and held a 22-minute conversation. Kessinger's phone now registered in Broomfield. 7 a.m., Kessinger called Bill at Ultrasonic Guided Wave and held a two-minute conversation. Her call registered in Fort Lupton. 7.02 a.m., Kessinger left Jim a voicemail. 
call registered still in Fort Lupton. Straight after at 7.03 a.m., Jim called Kessinger back and held a two-minute conversation. Still Fort Lupton. 8.28 a.m., Kessinger called Jim again and held a one-minute conversation. Still in Fort Lupton. 8.56 a.m., Jim called Kessinger back and held a six-minute conversation. Still in Fort Lupton. 10.03 a.m., Jim called Kessinger again and held a three-minute conversation. 10.59 a.m., Kessinger called Bill at Ultrasonic Guided Wave and held a six-minute conversation. Call registering in Platteville. 3.10 p.m., Kessinger called her sister and held a 14-minute conversation. Still in Platteville. 3.57 p.m., Kaylee at Tasman Geosciences called Kessinger and held a two-minute conversation. Call registered in Thornton. At 4.11 p.m., Kessinger made a call, don't know who, and held a three-minute conversation. Still in Thornton. At 4.14 p.m., Kessinger called Xcel Energy. Still in Thornton. At 4.15 p.m., Dallas police called Kessinger and held a one-minute conversation. Still in Thornton. At 4.18 p.m., Dallas police called Kessinger again and held a two-minute conversation. Call now registered in North Glen. Straight after this call at 4.21 p.m., Kessinger called her dad and held a two-minute conversation. Still in North Glen. At 4.27 p.m., Jim called Kessinger and held a 12-minute conversation. Call now registered in Thornton. At 4.38 p.m., XL Energy called Kessinger and held a one-minute conversation. Call registered in Denver. At 4.40 p.m., Kessinger called Jim and held a 13-minute conversation. Still in Denver. While Kessinger was busy all day on calls, Chris, Shanann, and the girls drove to the beach, North Myrtle Beach, they got a condo by the beach to spend time together as a family, and stayed there for four to five days. Shanann's father was with them for the first couple of days, and then her mom joined them after her dad left, so Chris and Shanann were rarely alone together. Chris and Shanann discussed over text where their relationship was going. Chris said North Carolina was the first time he and Shanann ever discussed separating, he said, like, if we're bringing a third kid into this world, like, like, what's, what's our relationship gonna look like, is it gonna be, are we gonna be? Are we gonna work this out, or is this gonna lead to a separation, is this gonna lead to where, like, we stay together and be civil with the kids or are we gonna be our separate ways? He said Shanann was very emotional and there was a lot of crying. He told Shanann he didn't feel the same connection with her anymore. He didn't feel like he could be himself anymore or the person Shanann needed him to be, he said he felt like something was missing in his life by not talking to his parents and Shanann said. She tried to kill my daughter, Chris said I don't think she did. Shanann told Cassie that Chris was very cold, he called her Shanann which he had not done since they started dating. He usually only called her pet names like Honey or Babe. Chris would not hug her or even hold her hand, he would not tell her he loved her. Shanann expressed to Cassie that Chris was a totally different person and was not the man she married eight years ago. Cassie said it was Chris that wanted a third child. He was the one that talked Shanann into having a third child. At 6.51 p.m., Chris took assorted photographs of his children on carnival rides at the Pavilion Park in Myrtle Beach. At 8.31 p.m., Kessinger called Jim and held a five-minute conversation. Call registered in Denver. As soon as this call ends, at 8.36 p.m., Jim called Kessinger back again and held a seven-minute conversation. Why on earth do they do this most times they call each other, it's very very odd to me. 9.11 p.m., Chris called Kessinger and held a 68-minute conversation. She is now in Thornton. Part 8, coming soon.